I recently tweeted about sitting to record a game for a video and getting stuck playing for about four hours in one sitting because, well, I just couldn't stop. At the Portly Gamer on Twitter, by the way, you could follow me if you want. Anyway, I'm glad to finally talk about that game today, Forager. I'm not gonna lie, I first played Forager months ago when the Early Access version was available for humble monthly subscribers, and I played for about 10 minutes before I turned it off and uninstalled it. It was just one of those things, you know, where you sit to play a game that maybe you got for free, so you don't have that mentality of, well, I paid for it, so I have to play it. You half-heartedly try it out and think, nah, I don't want to play this. It doesn't mean it's a bad game, it just isn't clicking with you at that moment, so you put little to no effort into giving it a fair try. Well, even though I still didn't have to pay for the finished version of the game that's out now, I decided to sit and give it an honest go, and I'm so glad that I did because this time it clicked. Forager is a cutesy pixel art crafting game all about mining, exploring, and well, foraging, and things kick off on a single small island. The game starts you off with a few objectives to teach you the basics, build a furnace, build a forge, and then it kind of lets you take the reins from there. And now right away is where you might start to notice a couple of the game's initial flaws. As you're starting out, you might notice that the island only spawns a finite amount of resources at a time most of which are trees. To build these first few structures and be on your way, you're gonna need iron. Trouble is, at least when I started, I was only getting like one or two iron veins to spawn at a time, if any at all. As you break one resource, another will randomly pop up elsewhere, most of the time for me being another tree. Like, I don't have enough trees. Oddly enough, at the start of the game, there isn't a huge need for wood. Wood can be turned into coal using the furnace, but if that's the case, why are there coal veins that spawn too instead of iron? Just takes up more resources. I have the coal, forager! Give me the iron! It was annoying at first, but I did eventually work past it, and now I'm swimming in iron, so it's fine, Forager, I forgive you. I know this starting island is small, but don't worry. As you play, you'll earn gold, which you can use to buy land, which expands the map, which almost always has something interesting to interact with or explore. You can gain gold coins by making gold ingots and then turning them into coins of the forge, selling items, or if you're just first starting out, you can do what I did and just level up and choose the perk that gives you 40 gold instantly. Trust me, it'll get things moving along. It won't be very long before you go from a map that looks like this to one that looks like this. All of my life I have searched for a land like this one. Once you've got things moving and you have your second or third island unlocked, be prepared for the speed of this thing to be much faster. Unlocking new resources, new items, new biomes, dungeons, enemies, and leveling up which allows you to choose new perks that'll give you more things to build. There are over 60 skills to unlock as you play the game, and as long as you choose the right skills for your playstyle, you'll be able to make whatever you want to make a lot faster. I recommend eventually unlocking the mining rod which shoots lasers to automatically mine resources for you, and all your mining is basically automated, freeing you up to concentrate on more important things. As you explore, you'll meet various friendly and sometimes weird NPCs who will give you quests. It also won't be long before you encounter enemies, starting from basic slimes to bigger, scarier things. The penalty for death isn't so bad though, just kicking you out to the main menu, and then you reload basically right before you died. Die in a dungeon though, and you'll wake up outside and have to start the entire dungeon over. Complete a dungeon and you'll gain all kinds of rare power-ups to increase your max hearts, stamina, and so on. In the dungeon I have explored so far, I found a pedestal where you can choose a boon, which lets you choose a reward in exchange for one max heart. Neither of these rewards really seemed worth losing one of my three max hearts to me, but unfortunately I had to choose one or the other and lose that max heart. Couldn't find a way to get out of that. Trust me, I mashed the escape button as much as I could. In addition to unlocking new structures to build, like crafting stations, you can use those crafting stations to build more complex resources like bricks and steel, as well as crafting things like new equipment, better pickaxes, shovels, swords, and armor, which all give you perks, as well as increasing the inventory space of your backpack, which you are going to need, because eventually, you're gonna have a lot of things. But no worries, because you can also build vaults, which allow you to store all of your items as well. One thing I do have to complain 
complain about is that the islands are all a bit cramped, so for you to build all these structures, you're gonna need to either deal with cramped space or space them out over time on other islands, which kind of becomes a little annoying. I personally like to keep all my crafting stations close together like a big workstation instead of having to run around the map and remember, where exactly did I put that anvil again? But if you're like me, you can just use wood to build wood bridges, which you can place anything on just like a piece of land, just kind of floating there in the sea. There's also a museum where you can donate X amount of resources to fill the exhibits and gain even more rewards. As you continue playing the game, you'll complete challenges called feats, which will unlock new cosmetic items to let you dress up your little forager however you want. From simple things like top hats, to Cthulhu heads, to vampire wings, and even some stuff from some indie games you might recognize. The game may end up feeling repetitive to some people, but ultimately it is up to you what you make of it. You decide what you want to do next. The side quests and islands you unlock will be there to help guide you toward new goals and objectives, but ultimately it is all sort of up to the direction that you take it. I don't know if the island unlocks are procedurally generated or not, considering I only have one save file so far, but either way, you just really never know what you're gonna be getting on your first playthrough. In just the first two days after starting the game, I put in a good 10 hours or so. If any of this seems like fun to you at all, I do highly recommend picking up the game and giving it a real chance. Once you're past those first couple of islands, it rewards your patience and is worth the $20 price tag.